What's going on, guys? Dane here, and welcome back to, well, you already know, right? We got phobies on the docket, and hear me out, man, because you can't stop it. Golden Star, this match was a fun one, and a perfect example of a learning experience gone correctly. If you guys saw yesterday's video, um, Colossi taught me something, and that's about traffic control, and... Uh, that's how we destroyed this man right here. Made him look really, really bad with some really crazy fears. This man is actually ahead of me in uh, level count in the crazy ultra rares he has and the units he has, all that crazy stuff. Um, But Colossi taught me a lesson I took to heart, which is why I always tell you guys, you know, if you lose, make it a learning lesson. Go back and win. That's all you got to do, man. Uh, but either way, we are doing story time today. Uh, yesterday, we were talking about how I was actually, like, accidentally trapping, right? And that was a beautiful... Six, seven years of my life. Now, today, I want to go into something a little bit more laid back. A little bit more something, maybe a lot more people's speed. I want to talk about how I ended up becoming a professional gamer, right? How did I end up there? How did I end up playing on pro scenes? How did I end up playing on main stage in world tournaments? Because I have three separate times in two separate games been on the main stage. So I ask you, how? Or I guess you ask me how, and I'm going to let you know how. And where I'm at right now, because I am currently a professional gamer. This is my full-time job. Phobies ain't. YouTube's not. I play video games for a living. Let me tell you how I ended up where I'm at and the path that kind of led me there. Because I think it might be a little uh, interesting for a lot of people that are kind of like like-minded video gamers. You know what I mean? we got a lot of gamers in here, dog. But how the hell did I end up doing it? Because uh, like a lot of things, it was by accident. You know what I mean? I never really planned my life out. Ever. I never planned my life out. And... I'm blessed where it's at right now, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, it, it it harkens back, it harkens back, and it's a crazy, like, time skip kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? When I was four years old, my grandma bought me a deck of cards, and we played Gin Rummy. And I learned how to play Gin Rummy at four years old. At five years old, I learned how to play Texas Hold'em in Omaha, and at six years old... Hey, by the way, uh, Grandma, I know you're up there. Um, thank you, because you, like, saved my life with that deck of cards. And, like, my job is cards now, which is wild. I owe my Grandma so much, you have no idea, man. I wish she was here. I wish she was here. I hope she's proud. Um, but I miss that one, man, uh, more than I'll ever miss my parents, you know what I mean? Uh, but either way, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, flash forward, right? Six years old, right? I'm fresh off learning how to play cards. I'm learning how to think. I'm learning how to play at tables with adults and how to, like, actually, like, think like an adult. And I actually matured really early because I'm playing with these grown-ass people, trying to beat them. I'm getting accepted. Everyone's loving me. I'm kind of like baby in the game, you know what I'm saying? And I loved it, dog. I loved it. Um, Flash forward, six years old, right? Which is a little flash forward for me. Uh, My Uncle Mike showed me my very first video game. We played Virtua Fighter together on Nintendo 64, and it was nuts. It might have been PS1, actually. So, you can actually go ahead and fact check that. I don't know which one. Um, He had both, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, So, it could have been either one. I know I saw the Nintendo 64, but to the, I'll never be able to go back and see. You know what I mean? I'll never be able to double check. Um, But we played Virtua Fighter. We played, after that, GoldenEye, and we played MLB, whatever the year was, <laughs> uh, the very same day. And I loved every second of it. I was like, this is crazy. What are these things? Like, like we're fighting each other and like we're fucking flying through arenas and we're going crazy and I'm drunken master falling over the place. And I was loving it. We're playing Goldeneye. We're popping shots. I was loving it. All right, bet. Move forward a little bit later. I have a Nintendo 64. I'm playing video games. I'm having a good time. I can't stop thinking about winning and I can't stop thinking about competition. And I'm having a blast either way. And I'm enjoying single-player games. I've played thousands and thousands and thousands of games in every genre you can think of. And I love every genre. There's not a genre I fit into. There's not one like, ah, oh, it's either big brain or not. I'll play walking simulators if they've got a beautiful story to tell me. You know what I mean? I'll play anything because I love gaming. It's done so much for me. Um, That being said, flash forward, right? Uh, World of Warcraft Burning Crusade comes out. All right, bet. I'm playing World of Warcraft. I give my copy away to a friend of mine in need. I gave my World of Warcraft. I gave my Burning Crusade. It just came out to a friend of mine who had no money. We're in grade school. And I'm like, dog, here you go. Turn around and find out. I get home. And the most beautiful thing my parents actually ever did for me, one of them, there were some beautiful moments outside of the everything we've talked about before that we can't get into because honestly, I'll cry. You know what I mean? They got me Command and Conquer, the box set. I was number one ranked in Red Alert 2 and Red Alert 1. Uh, I played through the campaign. I never watched anything. There wasn't really YouTube like that to learn anything. 
I played through the campaign. I hit multiplayer. I was number one ranked in both uh, until I decided not to be anymore. And I was like, bro, I'm like fucking eight years old or some shit. Like, I'm crazy. What the heck? Or nine years old, something like that. I was I was in heaven. I was like, this is something different. Um, I was having a blast. You know what I mean? And uh, the, the biggest brain competition I'd ever played. I didn't even realize I was playing something that's difficult. I didn't realize how big brain uh, RTSs are. And now StarCraft, if I had stuck with what I was doing, StarCraft would be a breeze. It was nothing compared to what we were up to. Like, StarCraft has no idea what we were doing, you know what I mean? You had to have ADHD in five hands. Uh, but either way, crushing in the game. Skip forward later. Xbox 360 era. The first time I really cared about my rank, because I no longer was naturally good. I no longer was naturally... Now I actually had to rely on all the thinking skills I'd learned over the course of playing cards, playing competitively in that, playing uh, video games in general, um, and, you know, anything else that I got going on with myself, you know what I mean? I get an Xbox 360, but I did not get a game that I really wanted on this goddamn console, dog. I wanted Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and for three months of it release, I actually couldn't get my hands on it. You couldn't get your hands on that game where I was at. You just It just wasn't anywhere, you know what I mean? It was sold out because of the multiplayer, which is what really excited me. I wanted to see that multiplayer. I wanted to play it. It looked big brain. It was like it, like stealth at its finest. I love stealth games to begin with. Like, I love every game, you know what I mean? But it was like, okay, like, if you're smart, this game's going to be up your alley. If you're dumb, you're going to have top kills and bottom score, and you're going to look stupid 24-7. You could have one kill, win the game. You could have zero kills, win the game. It was nutty how, like, big brain that game was. Top rank, and I wasn't the only one. Everyone in NF FNST, the finest. You know who you are. I'm talking JJ. I'm talking Grim. I'm talking Wolfie. I'm talking Full Scream. I'm talking Dakota. I'm talking a lot of motherfuckers that are in here. JJ, I miss you. Wolfie, I miss you. I, I miss the fuck out of Mally. I miss the fuck out of Dakota. But we were destroying that shit. And eventually, my favorite YouTuber, the one that I had to cope with, I was watching for three months before I had it and watching forever, became my favorite YouTuber of all time, helping me cope with not having Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, helping me get good at it before I even got on it, giving me all the tips, advice, gameplay examples especially, commentary was out of this world, I was watching this man and continued watching him after I actually got my copy. His name was Squiddish. He made me dream of being a YouTuber, and then he made me dream of being a caster, because he did it. You know what I mean? He made me dream of that shit. But eventually, he got tired of Assassin's Creed. All right, no big deal. He moved on to a lot of different things, but you know what he did move on to? He moved on to Smite. Now, Smite is a touchy subject, because I'm actually finally able to talk about it. I'm over my embargo of being able to say this on a little bit of a deal that went down. But there was a world tournament going on, right? And it was a flash forward of following my favorite YouTuber to Smite from Assassin's Creed, right? Now I'm playing MOBAs. And Smite's one of those weird ones where it doesn't get the credit it deserves. It is the best MOBA out, um, period. It just takes way more actual skill as a gamer. Uh, whereas, you know, like, League takes a lot of thought, but unfortunately, everything in Smite is a skill shot. Every dodge is a mechanical. You know what I mean? It's nuts how good you have to be at gaming, not just necessarily at thinking to be a Smite player. It is it is insanely difficult. Uh, like, even your auto attacks are skill shots, right? You can be in range. It doesn't matter, bro. If they're better at dodging than you are at aiming, you're not getting an advantage. Um, It's insane. It's insanely more difficult, and I've played a lot of League at this point. Um, but I was going crazy at it, dog. And maybe that's a controversial opinion. I think you're wrong. Like, honestly, and I don't think there's anything wrong. I think League has a lot going for it in other categories. I think the builds are bigger brand and all that crazy shit. You know what I mean? Uh, but either way, builds aside, when you know how to build, that doesn't change anything. You know what I mean? So you got to do is learn that. But it doesn't matter. Let me get off the, let me get off the, like, something that's going to get me canceled talking shit about League. Because actually, I like League a lot. Um, I like it a lot. I like Dongate a lot. I like a lot of games like that. But um, I was playing and I was ass at it. It was the worst I'd ever been at a video game. Um, I ended up my very like my third match, something crazy like that, going against someone named Zatman. And that man's a professional gamer. That man is uh, verified in the 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 scene. He destroyed me. He came in with Kronos and was destroying me. He was coming into base to find me. I was looking stupid. I was like, I'm so bad at this game. I didn't even know who he was. Then I found out I was on stream looking stupid. I was on his stream looking stupid. I was like, all right, bet you gonna make me look dumb. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm a, I'm gonna get good. 
And I did. I started watching people like Weekend. I started watching people like goddamn Sam the Dude. I was watching these people go crazy. I was watching Incon. I was getting crazy tips. And I was getting good and good and good. And getting my rank up and getting my rank up and getting my rank up. I hit grand fucking master, my dog. I hit top goddamn rank. I wasn't diamond, which is good enough. I wasn't master. I hit grand goddamn fucking master. And it felt fucking good. And I... Started getting verified, and I started to low-key, right? I never got on voice comms, nothing crazy like that, but I was listening. I'd be listening. People knew I'd be listening, right? I'm doing scrims with motherfuckers all of a sudden. I'm doing scrims with people like fucking Cloud9, fucking Envious. I'm doing scrims with people like fucking uh, like crazy companies, dog, COG. You know what I mean? When they were still in. Uh, that was back then, when COG was still with Smite. It was nutty times. I'm scrimming with these motherfuckers. And I'm loving it. And I'm going crazy. We're going crazy. We're having a blast. We're just top tier. Unbelievable. And honestly, I will say this to the day. I was the greatest aggro support you will have ever seen in that game. My Bacchus was so unbelievable. I made a meta. My assassin support was so unbelievable that my scrims ended up having assassin support meta happen forever forever and it was delayed i was gone before it even became a thing uh i went hunter support i went everything support and i was aggressive i'm getting kills i'm making plays and i'm voice comm shot calling with the you know via vgs system and we're going crazy i'm loving it now eventually there was one day where somebody needed a fill-in but it was an unfortunate fill-in because they had nobody to do it they had nobody verified they had no time to actually verify it was happening it was a last minute decision and we made an illegal decision for me to come in before they actually had to play in land before they had to go in georgia and it might have had something to do with why they have to play in person now i'm not positive on that and i don't want to take credit for that part because that part i don't know right um and honestly it probably isn't it just makes sense to play live and i think it's more exciting you know what i'm saying um i filled in illegally under someone else's name and that's all i'm gonna say about that i ain't gonna say team i ain't gonna give no evidence <laughs> i filled in illegally twice in the same world tournament in a season that's going to go unspecified but actually if you kind of look at the timing there uh you might even be able to figure out the timing but i don't want to give it to you dog. <laughs> i don't want to give it to you because now i can actually talk about it so i can be less vague about it but actually i'm really good friends with two of them that were still there two of them that were still there uh you know what i mean uh still in the scene um and i don't i don't feel bad for them because honestly i was worse so they're kind of handicapped than the person i filled in for but what i did was bring aggression out the wazoo, and I got to play twice in that goddamn thing. You know what I'm saying? I got to play twice in that goddamn thing. Now what am I doing? Well, I'll tell you right now, I am a professional gamer to this day. I gave making a YouTube channel a real chance, a real try. You know what I'm saying? I was gaming. I was top rank. I think we had top rank in about 10 games in this uh, on this channel. A lot of them are gone because I did do a view count uh, related wipe, so anything that got less than 100 views got deleted after like a year. Um, we had a lot of top rank in a lot of different games, a lot of, and we just weren't getting views. You know what I mean? We, we hit number one in so much. It was stupid. And then I gave up. I was like hitting number one doesn't matter. So let me be, you know, the best commentator, but I missed my main drive being the best there ever was. And I never was the best there ever was in anything. I don't think, I think I just work harder than a lot of people are willing to. Um, and that, let that be a lesson. Cause I'm not smart. I'm not, I'm not intelligent. No one is. We have a piece of meat with the wires in it keeping us together you know what i mean imagine if you tried to make a computer out of meat it'd be stupid right it'd be the dumbest computer you ever saw that's what it's like having a brain that's how dumb we are so i just work harder you know what i mean i just memorize more i just learn more if i can uh and i'm okay with only sleeping four hours a night that's what i do i sleep four hours a night uh but while i was making the channel you know we had a moment this was public this is like like all of this like channel related stuff is public you know it's all on here somewhere um, I had to go. I was like, I just, I need to pursue something where it makes sense to grind. I'm finding myself really dis dissatisfied, right? Uh, with trying to be the best in something where there's no reward. Like, why would I want to be the best in Smite when there's no reward? 30,000 a year is not a reason for me to actually want to be on a team. 30,000 a year is insulting. Insulting. You know what I mean? So why would I do it? That's kind of where I'm at with that one. So what did I do? I moved to poker and I started getting coached, right? I'm currently being coached by 
Do I even want to say, like, the people coach? Look, Daniel Negreanu, dog. Um, I, I'm paying for his coaching, right? And, like, I don't really want to say who, not because it's, like, a flex because I'm paying for his coaching. It's online. But because I don't want anyone knowing, like, where I'm getting my advice from because maybe then they can exploit it. But that's who. Daniel Negreanu, I think he's the greatest in the world. And I don't think that's... I, I think the man has not had the same ends of the flips that a lot of people have, is my opinion. But... At the end of the day, I am currently playing poker full time. I'm currently hitting low tables, right? I'm hitting a five dollar buy in. All right, uh, if you catch three stacks an hour, you're making fifteen bucks an hour. What if you moved up to ten uh, to ten dollar tables, right? Okay, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, ten dollar table and five dollar table, same time, no big deal. Uh, catch three stacks at both tables, you made thirty at one, fifteen another, forty five an hour. Add in a thirty dollar table, slow, you might catch one stack every hour. Okay, now you're getting thirty. You're getting three stacks from the other one still, on average, because they're about the same skill level. Okay, add another 30, 60. Okay, add another 15. You're making 75 an hour at three tables easily at the low ends. That's my job. Does that sound pretty nice? Because it's easy to do. You just have to learn. You know what I mean? You have to learn. You have to be very disciplined, and I would not recommend it unless you're willing to put in so much study outside of everything you're okay to neglect everything, you know what I mean? You're okay with this becoming everything you care about, and that's what I do. I'm currently hitting the Sunday half millions on Sunday the 30th. You guys hit 16 likes on the last episode, which means $16 is going into tickets. Uh, however many likes on this one is going to continue that trend. Uh, currently, I have one $10 ticket. Let's get four more, and then we're at another $10 ticket. Let's see if we can get some of the 20s, 50s, 60s, all that beautiful stuff. Uh, but until then, guys, that is, you know, that's kind of my journey, you know what I mean? Um, that's kind of like what led to everything. That's kind of where I'm at now. Uh, hopefully I get to cast someday, but that's kind of like the step by step by step. I love you guys and peace out.